Hey guys, welcome to an episode that has the most tasteless, offensive title of any episode I've ever done. And believe you, considering the depths that I have lowered myself to repetitively and consistently, in this business, consistency is important. Quality, no, if you're producing low quality, be consistent with it anyway. Welcome to the crappiest guitar case ever. Meet our subject. The crappiest guitar case ever. It is tore up from the floor up, and we are going to redo this, this guitar case in memory, with tribute to, with deference to, or any other term that's made up to make something seem more important or valuable than it really is. So why are we doing this? Well, my grandpa Bub had a beer joint in northern Wisconsin that was the equivalent of the worst juke joint in Mississippi. It had a two-story outhouse in front. Everybody knew it, at least in the Tri-County area. It was very... Anyway, there it is. Grandpa Bub's two-story outhouse. This is going to be the theme for this crappiest guitar case ever. So, without further delay, because sometimes when restrooms or outhouses come into the picture, people are hurrying and running. So, let's waddle on over to the bench and get the covering of this guitar case tore off without delay. I will see you at the bench. Okay, guys, we're set up on the bench the best we can. Let's start off with a before, and then we'll show you the after later. So, before. So, before we get into doing any work on this thing, let's take a look at what we've got. This is actually a pretty good case. It is not chipboard, but it is stapled. You can see there are staples here. Um, and... It's plywood. Uh, the coating is coming off. The covering is coming off. You can see pretty easily. Let's flip this over. And see what we've got. Okay. The hinges are pretty good. Um, one of the, or I mean the latches are pretty good. This hinge on the back here is coming undone off the body. That's okay, we can fix that. But as we kick this thing open, ooh, we've got this wonderful okri. Isn't that the color, okri? It has a spot to keep everything in, as most guitar cases do. And you can tell from the, these lines up here, let's move this over here, this has actually held a guitar here. Again, this hinge is coming off, but other than that, this thing's in pretty good shape. So, I don't want to just tear this off and have the adhesive come loose. So, we are going to use a heat gun and a scraper. Yeah, you can see that there's an adhesive here on the top. We're going to strip all of this down and... The only thing that we are not going to take off is there's this piece right here, this part right here at the edge that's bound. We're going to leave that one alone, but all of the rest of the stuff, including the sides, bottom, and top, are going to come off. Okay, so before we get rolling here, a couple of things. I want to take a razor knife, and wherever this is still attached, to this part that's stitched, this part of the cover here, you see this? We don't want to take that off, but anywhere it's attached to here, we want to score this very carefully, putting pressure like so. So when we do heat this up, it's going to come up cleanly and not take any of this with it. So we'll score this a couple of times like this. You just hold it like this, using this as a spacer. It's kind of like similar to 
scraping binding you just keep that there without cutting your finger off but we're going to score it like that next thing these heat guns have a setting we don't want to put it on maximum and burn everything up when you're dealing with wood or some kind of covering you don't know how it's going to set it on fire you can always turn it up if you need to but once it's on fire turning this down will not put the fire up so we're simply going to go along heat this up I'm going to shut the volume down to do that but you can see wherever there is adhesive holding the thing we're going to heat this up and then get this where it's ready to pop everything off we want this to be very smooth because the finish we're going to put on this albeit crappy is going to be very interesting All right, there we go. Everything is off of the top of the guitar. Now what we're going to do is we're going to heat up some of these spots where we've got some Klingon adhesive left over because we're not going to want any bumps. We're going to want this to be smooth where we don't want our hand bouncing all over the place when we touch this fine piece of merchandise. Nice and smooth. So we're going to heat this up a little bit. Again, we don't want to start things on fire, but basically scrape this smooth. Okay, so now we're going to flip this over, and we're going to do the same thing with the bottom. It has tried to take care of a lot of itself already over the years, but same thing, and then we'll move off to the sides. Okay, the sides are going to be a tad bit more difficult and what we really want to pay attention to here is wherever there's going to be an interface here, we want to keep this. We want to end up with this edge and this binding in good shape, so we don't want to loosen that up at all. But wherever, since we're going to take the stuff around here, and since these are riveted on, short of using a, a drill and popping those loose and remounting them, Wherever there is a hinge piece or a handle piece, we're going to want to score these ahead of time. So when it comes time to remove this pleather or whatever it is, we're not going to tear anything or mess up things. So we're not going to cut ourselves, but we're going to score around each one of these things. You want to remember now that the sides is where there's going to be quite a bit of adhesive. You can predict that you're going to encounter a lot of adhesive wherever the covering has to stick to a curve in the guitar. So we'll go along and very patiently remove this stuff and pull the heat gun in wherever we run across any resistance. 
All right, there we go. Top, bottom, sides, all denuded of this pleatherish naga hide, whatever you want to call it, from whenever it was. So, what do we do with this? I told you before we started, and now you're wondering after how everything came off here, what are we going to do to keep our promise to make this as crappy as Grandpa Bub's two-story outhouse? Well, guess what? With a little help from my friend Earl Lube Paste and a chip brush, and only here, people, only here, a copy of, that's right, the Vanishing American Outhouse, the Vanishing American Outhouse by Ronald S. Barlow, a stalwart in American literature. We have this book here, and unfortunately for everyone else, but fortunately for me, and that loud truck that's going by, again, wealth in acting is the mufflers or lack thereof on your truck compounded by its height off the ground gives you wealth. Anyway, this poor book has been damaged somehow where its contents are loose. What this book is about, the outhouse, how to construct it, how to do whatever you need. There's good stuff. There's cartoon outhouses. There's everything. But I literally have pages and pages of outhouse plans and pictures. And yes, we are going to cover this guitar case with what used to be this book. But again, for the American Outhouse Protection League or whoever you are, I want to assure you that no outhouse books were harmed in the filming of this process. So I'm going to get this done. We're going to cut these out little by little. We're going to be very careful not to leave any holes in the design. Notice important chick flick teal scissors. I'm just going to go around these fine photographs. Again, remember, there were no outhouse looks harm during the filming of this episode. I may want to keep this part up here to use as binding or something later. But man, I'm glad that I did really well in second grade. Notice these superior skizzers sill skizzards skizzers skills rented lips multitasking while doing something along the lines of fine art is very difficult. To the floor, Earl Lube. Been a while since I talked to you, Padna. Here we go. We're going to be very careful to arrange these or it appears that there's no rhyme or reason said Earl Lou Paste. Okay, guys, we're mid-project, and I wanted to make sure that I catch up on the progress I've made. Anyway, we've got top and bottom covered with graphics. We're going along the edge now and uniformly trimming everything to get a nice uniform edge like so, using these wonderful, inexpensive little razor knives. Once that is done, we are going to take our hide glue heater here 
and this fine ribbon I got from a craft store. And we're going to make sure that edge is really nice. I do have a problem. I have... Law, I do not have enough of the appropriate size and scale outhouse pitchers to put along the side of the guitar. And that is quite a dilemma in and of itself. So keeping with the theme, keeping with the brilliance, I have decided that I'm actually, once I get all of this done and the hinges and everything in order, and understanding that this, even though it's crappy, will hold some of the finest guitars in the world, or at least in my mind they are, we need to make sure that softness and velvety smoothness that that theme is capped. So I'm going to cover the sides with toilet paper. See, it keeps the theme. But remembering that it needs to be soft and delicate. We're going to use not only toilet paper, but quilted toilet paper. Okay, I'm going to get to work. I'm going to show you little clips so you can see how to do this yourself. Not this, the guitar case. Next, after going around and making sure we uniformly trim off things. See, I'm basically doing this like I would binding in a place your thumb and finger in a spot where you're basically acting as a guide where you get a uniform cut on the edge because we're going to need to put our binding our binding not our binding but we're going to turn on our hide glue heater right now oh light went on there we go we're not going to start a fire here remember we want a little bit not too much but a little bit of water right there don't pour it on the electrical element. But once that's done, then we will take a brush once it's heated up, take one of our brushes, make the application, and then use the ribbon here and lay it on there with hide glue and tack it all down. The hide glue will give us good working time and if something goes wrong in the future and we need to replace something, we can take our heat gun and heat up everything and make a repair. Okay, here we go. Our hide glue is heated up. We've got our acid brush. You can, these are nice. You can always clip these down or do whatever you want. You'll notice that we want to keep this strip of leather and the binding that went with it in good shape. So we are going to cover that up with painter's tape. Um, if you've ever seen an episode I did about binding, binding jobs, um, I will give you a link to it right up there, right about now. One thing that you'll know about doing binding is we start at the back of the guitar and go all the way around. We're going to do the same thing here about where this clip is, center of this closure. We're going to start there. I've got some binding tape, low-tack binding tape, that once we put the ribbon on, we can do this to hold it in place like that, and then it'll come right off. While we're doing this, if there's anything at these spots where everything came together uh, that needs, there's a little bit of loose right there, we can just take our hide glue and put a dab of it there and take care of that while we're going along. But I want to remember that sometimes this hide glue will build a skin up on top and it cools off. Anyway, we're going to take our brush. We're going to come along and get this on here. We want to make sure that we don't get it too far up here like so. Just put it there like that. And then we're going to start in the center here and just lay our binding 
or our binding, our ribbon along here, like so. And then as we need to, we'll go along, just tape it down like that. Okay, next move is we have run out of sufficient graphics to cover the sides of the guitar uniform, the guitar case, excuse me. I'm thinking actually about thick arch tops that the sides may be a good application. But look, running out of paper in relation to bathroom things, that's, that's nothing new. It's happened in nearly everyone. But, so what we're going to do is we're going to start here. And it's just like laying flooring when you're using toilet paper for things other than, well, you know, this is a family channel. Um, we want the separation line to be offset so they don't all line up. And we are basically going to lay out strips of toilet paper, like so. And we are going to use the appropriate material given the topic at hand, Earl Lou paste, and put this all around. Now, when we get to a spot where there is a latch or something protruding, usually don't want to use toilet paper on anything that's protruding until the protuberance has been removed. But I don't know if you can see here, we are just going to simply cut the paper and notch it out wherever needed, like so, and make it fit. This is a custom job for sparing no expense. So. I have put on three coats of the finest tissue paper in my world and I have put this in place with Earl Lube paste. Earl Lube paste. That's right. Now when you're doing this kind of thing you have to pay attention to what you're going to put over the top of this to solidify it. You don't want this to be all loose like this. So what you're really looking for is we're going to put another coat of this on and we're going to let it dry for two or three days. So what we're looking for is a consistency of tissue paper that you would find laying on the ground for a week at an RV dump site. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Anyway, once that's done, we are going to coat this with a color because what we're after here is the texture. So we're going to use a color that complements this fine ribbon work. Do you see that? We put the ribbon on. And I think we're going to use a color that complements that like this color that I'm going to call gray water gray. I'll catch up again in a little bit. Okay guys, this is about as dry as it's going to get. So before we put the coating on it, we want to do two things. We want to take a rough sandpaper block and go along and knock down anything that's hanging up here everywhere where it doesn't get hung up on something later and tear off so nice and smooth. And then we want to take some painter's tape and mask off anything that we don't want to be gray water gray. Okay guys, it is done, but uh, before I pop open the lid and do the reveal, I need a minute here. You know, it makes me really emotional, because sometimes even with the crappiest thing in the world, you get done and you look down at it and you realize, you know what, that is a masterpiece. But you realize the only thing, the right thing to do is to go ahead 
garner up all your courage and hit the flush handle. You know what I'm saying? All right, I, I think I'm all right now. But, uh, you know, I want to dedicate this episode to Mr. Whipple. Remember Mr. Whipple? Um, yeah, Mr. Whipple, this is for you. I'm over here squeezing the charm and just, or whatever it is, just for you. Uh, I remember you as a kid. I remember something you used to say that I never really understood when you guys came out with lemon-scented uh, toilet paper. I never understood that right now. I mean, I just, you know, once that I actually covered this in toilet paper and I smelled it, it reminded me, I got it, why someone would say, hey, honey, come and smell my lemony fresh. Yeah, guitar case. Let's throw this up on the bench and have a look. Toilet paper roll, please. Let's do the reveal. Okay, you remember what it looked like before. It sure looks better after, doesn't it? Oh, and before I forget, in the category of best support role, an episode about toilet-related guitar cases goes to, that's right, the Stumac Guitar Workstation. Yes. Okay, let's open this up. Chick Flick Teal Pointer, would you do the honors? There you go. Now, I know that there's virtually nothing worse than stray pieces of toilet paper that show up unexpectedly at the wrong time. But, that said, I want you to notice that we have fixed the hinges. We have put on a Chick Flick Teal strap so the case doesn't overextend. We have fixed the area that you keep all your scrap apparatus, and this is one of the finest uses of the color okri I have ever seen. Yes. The front end, always impressive, but looking at the back end, especially when it comes to toilet paper, that's what really matters. There we go. Shiny, new, unadulterated, it's everything you never thought to ask for. I am, I'm thinking Grandpa Bob, wherever you are, I'm getting a message that he needs air conditioning, but wherever you are, Grandpa Bob, you gotta be proud of this. This is the kind of thing people have grandchildren for so they can look down and be oh, oh, so proud. All right, so what now? We, oh, you're saying you'd like to have this? Well, guess what, Padna? There's about 4,000 other ones that want it too, so you'll just have to cry into your Kleenex or whatever you have. But you remember the Russian guitar from the episode What's in the Case, Comrade? Link right up there right about now. We're going to put the Soviet Union-made guitar in the crappiest guitar case in the world and call this episode a day. Isn't that pretty? All right, there we go. I told you you would be completely and utterly disamazed. Now, after you give me a like and a subscribe, I should win some kind of noble uh, environmental sustainability award for this or something. Y'all y'all go ahead and nominate me for that and some other stuff. I don't even know what it is. But anyway, thanks for watching. And I'm going to put this case up in the crappiest guitar case in the world section of my shop. And I'm going to have to like expand it to include a uh, Cold War collectible mementos. I'm going to get on that right now. I'll see you soon.
so there you go there's the two grandpa's two-story outhouse and a collection a fine collection of outhouses laminated into the top of the toilet paper applique sides <laughs> John's gonna love this he's gonna think it's extra special it's gonna be the uh, it'll be the selling point for some things How much is that case, someone's going to say? We'll go, well, that one's not for sale. <laughs> that one's special, and they'll want it more. Oh, boy. That's very cool. Now, thanks for this beautiful display, Kim. Um, we'll make good use of it.